Welcome. I'd like to go through the class size research that Hattie uses in his 2009 book, Visible Learning. Hattie references three meta-analyses in, in his appendix and represents each meta-analysis with one average effect size, even though each meta-analysis has a number of different studies. In the case of the Jean Glass Mary Smith, there are 77 studies with over half a million students. Hattie then averages these three effect sizes to get his overall effect size of 0.21, and which is below his hinge point of 0.4. Above 0.4, Hattie claimed was the zone of desired effects. So class size uh, got a negative rating um, because 0.21 is well below the 0.4. It's interesting to note that the glass of the class size study is also the same Professor Jean Glass who invented the meta-analysis meta methodology and Hattie cites as Jean Glass as the person that inspired him to get into this line of work. But Glass also uh, listed a number of protocols, one of which was the results of the result of a meta-analysis should never be an average, it should be a graph. Well, clearly Hattie ignores that protocol by publishing the one average. Uh, in addition, Professor Peter Blatchford, who's probably the foremost class size researcher of the last 25 years, collaborated with 16 other academics in the largest study on class size so far, class size Eastern and Western perspectives. Um, Blatchford talks about the prevalence of the unimportant view, which is Hattie's view that class size doesn't matter. Um, and Blatchford calls for us to look at the evidence uh, to see if these claims are true. And Blatchford names Hattie's summary of studies as the major influence, was one of the major influences on these um, overall studies that are reporting that class size is not important. Um, interestingly, later in the same book, Blatchford gives Hattie a chapter and the weight of the evidence from the other 16 academics forces Hattie to concede. The evidence is reasonably convincing reducing class size does enhance student achievement. Yet around at the same time in about 2016, in the Australia-wide TV series Revolution School, looking at a school and then also John Hattie was the education expert, Hattie makes the unequivocal claim that reducing class size does not make a difference to the quality of education, directly contradicting what he wrote in Blatchford's book. Worse, in the lead up to the publication of Visible Learning, Hattie had many public lectures uh, mostly with principals and administrators, and he, he would often have slides, for example, this is his 2005 ACE lecture, he would have a, a, a slide, a bunch of slides called the disasters, and he would have listed in there a whole bunch of educational influences, which he implied were disasters. Class size regularly featured, um, because back in 2005, the effect size was 0.05, it's uh, nearly four times larger now, which is another issue, but um, in addition, problem-based learning featured in his disasters slide, and problem-based learning has, has got bad connotations ever since. Uh, in addition, in 2015, in his collaboration with Pearson, he wrote a paper called The Politics of Distraction and, and named class size as one of the major distractions. Um, worse, Hattie now has a significant commercial partner, the international company Corwin, and they publish in an advertisement, uh, a What's Works advertisement, and they clearly display that class size does not work. Uh, not only does that contradict Hattie's uh, sentence in the Blatchford book, but it also contradicts Hattie's aim in Visible Learning, where Hattie says, one aim of this book is to develop an explanatory story about the key influences on student learning. It is certainly not to build another What Works recipe. Uh, in an interview with Ollie Lovell, mostly to teachers in 2018, when pressed on the simplistic notion of categorising educational effects based on the effect size, as he did in the disasters slide, uh, Hattie retreats and said, it's, not, it's about the story, not about the numbers. And then uh, Eddie Wu, who's, I believe, the first teacher uh, to become Australian of the Year in reaction to Hattie's claims echoes what most teachers that I've ever uh, talked to agree with and Wu says don't tell me that class size does not make a difference. Okay let's have a look at the studies. So the first one Jean Glass and Mary Smith 
they do a range of class size uh, reduction comparisons. So as referenced, Hattie gets a low average of 0.09, once again against Glass's protocol of not having an average to represent the whole study. Um, it's difficult to find where Hattie got this 0.09. It's a common problem with Hattie's work. He doesn't say exactly where or how he got the result. So you have to uh, you have to read the study carefully just to try and find it. Um, Glass and Smith publish a table of different class size reductions. So I'm guessing had he got his average from this table. These are the effect sizes. But if you average those, you get 0 0.25, not 0.09. Um, and in any case, um, if you did average all of those, you'd have to ask, what does that average mean, given that these are different class size reductions? Glass and Smith publish a graph uh, which clearly shows the trend and is pretty consistent with teacher experience. So as we reduce class size from 40 students down to 30, there's a bit of an improvement in student achievement. But as we decrease class size even further, there's quite a big impact on student achievement. In addition, they write a lot about the difference between good quality or well-controlled studies versus poorly controlled studies. Hattie never mentions this graph nor the trend, nor the issue of well-controlled and poor-controlled studies. So uh, with Hattie's latest mantra of the story, the story, the story, he's definitely ignored this story. Just to hammer home the point, um, Smith and Glass conclude a clear and strong relationship between class size and achievement has emerged. There is little doubt that other things being equal, more is learned in the smaller classes. Um, they also detail uh, in contradiction to Hattie, Hattie's often been questioned about what about the difference between the ages of the students. Hattie claims he's done a number of um, analysis that shows that age has no effect, but Smith and Glass contradict that by saying the, glass, the class size and achievement relationship seems consistently stronger in secondary grades than in elementary grades. I contacted Professor Glass just to double check, showed him the, the Hattie interpretation of his study, he, he replied to me in an email, averaging class size reduction effects over a range of reductions makes no sense to me. It's the curve that counts. Um, but then he emphasizes, but it's teacher workload and its relation to, to class side is what's important. Um, there's a whole range of people that talk about or, or criticize Hattie's averaging. I've just referenced two here. Bergeron is a stats professor from Canada, says that Hattie computes averages that do not make any sense. Thebolt is a mathematics researcher. He says the same thing but takes it further but by saying that the, um, the averaging that Hattie does means that he misses the complexity of the study or the story of the study. Uh, it's also ironic that Jean Glass plus 20 other distinguished academics collaborated in a book called 50 Myths and Lies That Threaten America's Public Schools and their myth 17 is the Hattie myth, class size doesn't matter. So they respond, fiscal conservatives contend in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary that students learn as well in large classes as in small. So for which students are large classes okay? Only the children of the poor. Okay, the second, the second meta-analysis, McGivern. Uh, this is a very different study to the Glass and Smith because it's only looking at class size, uh, one sort of class size reduction of around about 26 students down to 19 and it's only on second year students. So they report um, a reasonably high effect size of 0.34 but once again this is a very different study to Glass and Smith. They also advise caution um, in interpreting this result because they make special mention of confounding variables um, which is another thing that I found consistent amongst most of the studies that Hattie uses. Most of the authors always advise caution in interpreting their studies. The third study that Hattie used uh, was Goldstein. Uh, it's, it's strange that he uses this because the, Goldstein in their introduction say the present paper focuses more on the methodology of meta-analysis than on the substantive issues of class size per se. They recommend looking at their previous paper to get the details and they summarize some of the details in their paper. So. This study is more consistent with the gene glass where there's a range of different class size reductions. So they've looked at a number of studies. They've referenced the age or the year group of the students and how many students are affected. And they've reported some effect sizes. 
Now how do you report an overall effect from this study of 0.2? Once again, it's difficult to know where Hattie got that 0.2 from um, because these are all different class size reductions. If you average all of the effect sizes from the different studies, you get close to 0.2. So I'm guessing that's where Hattie uh, derived his overall average from. Now, now this particular study shows another issue with class size in particular, and that is um, study two classifies a class size of 23 as a small class, but um, study nine classifies 23 as a normal class. So when putting all the research together, you've got real problems when the authors of the original studies use di different classification. So once again, um, these the authors of this study do not report an average of 0.2. That's that's Hattie's averaging, and his, Hattie's averaging is once, a, once again very questionable. Um, in addition, the definition of small, large, and, and normal classes is a big issue in class size. Two, two German researchers uh, talk about it in detail in their, their, their paper. Um, and then another problem that these authors talk about is the problem of different achievement tests. And that in introduces further va variation, in particular, when you compare studies that use a standardized test with a specific test, uh, there's a lot of other research, and I go into another blog and video on that, that the difference um, in using a specific test, you can often get an effect size of over four times bigger than a standardized test. Um, and once again, th this paper also contradicts Hattie's claim that age makes no difference. Uh, they say our results show how vital it is to take into account the age of the children when considering class size effects. They then go into a little bit more complexity, but they show the same thing, that as you reduce class size, achievement uh, is improved. Once again, this story of this study is lost in Hattie's average of 0.2. Uh, the last thing I'd like to, to look at is Hattie's interpreta interpretation of the study's changes depends depending upon who he presents to. So as I've already shown in the lead up to his publication, in his presentations, mostly to politicians, administrators and principals, had he pr promoted the meme, class size does not work. Um, so I've shown the ASA slides where he talks about class size being a disaster. The Pearson paper, he talks about class size being a distraction. He implies uh, focusing on class size is going backwards. Um, yet, in 2015, in, in a paper responding to his many critiques, he takes a bit of a backward step and he says, the main message remains, be cautious, interpret in the light of evidence, search for moderators, take care in de developing stories. It seems as though he hasn't had, he hasn't taken his own advice because using polemic language like the disasters is not being very cautious. In addition, as I've already shown, his commercial partner, uh, Corwin Publishing, in their advertising video that class size does not work um, is also not being very cautious. Um, and I've already shown that, that Hattie retreats when he's confronted by 16 other academics and he does concede the evidence is reasonably convincing reducing class size does enha enhance student achievement. But Hattie does a clever twist in that paper. He then changes the frame of reference to why is the positive effect size so small? And then in the interview with Ollie Lovell in 2018, he indirectly answers his own question um, when Lovell presents Hattie with a bit of a problem, the US Education Department's bench, benchmark of effect sizes that show low effects for older, older students. Hattie criticizes that, those results saying that they use standardized tests and standardized tests are too narrow and they get low effect sizes. But strangely, Hattie forgets that his class size studies use standardized tests. Um, and then in, in a, another reason why the effect size is slow is because of Hattie's averaging. And now in terms of Hattie's story, Hattie now says because of the low effect size, he, he contends that teachers don't change their teaching style from a large to small class. Um, I don't accept either of those claims. If Hattie would read those studies in more detail, they give lots of differences in smaller classes in terms of teaching. So I've listed a couple of references there and, and the differences found in the smaller classes. So on all levels, Hattie can be challenged. Thank you.